Phil, you'll start with yourself. You get to, particularly the last 18 months or so, you get to be involved in plenty of good days with, with Ireland. Was Saturday right up there from your own point of view? Yeah, Saturday was brilliant. Um, obviously a really physical, tough game and uh, to come out in the, with the win and obviously things didn't go to plan at times but the resilience we showed um, across the board was unreal. So yeah, it's up there. It was a brilliant night. Um, one I won't forget for sure. And from from your, your point of view and for Keane as well, like I think there were a lot of questions maybe about the, the depth Ireland have in the front row. Do you think you answered a lot of those questions at the weekend? Ah, uh, sure. I I don't know. Uh, I just focus on what I can do and um, work really hard at that and try and improve myself and improve my game as much as I can. And um, I wouldn't heed too much attention about the outside stuff. I just try and keep my focus pretty pretty narrow and on the in the moment. So um, I suppose yeah. If Key and Andy spoke after the game about Finlay, and he said that in the last eighteen months or so, almost every time he's played, he's He's improved and he's improved. Have you, how have you seen that over the last year or so? I probably think it's gone longer than that, isn't it? Really, like he's he's had his targets and things that he's been working on for I would say a good bit longer, and and you've seen the progression, and I felt it having to go against them in scrums in particular, and then play around the park. Um, he's he's become. Uh, one of the cogs that kind of that makes it all work pretty well, and uh, and it's been a natural fit. Like it's not something. I don't think it looks like he's trying to do something that's that's not his style or anything. He, he's really natural at it, and and it's great to see. Kian, you've been in squads for a very long time now. Where does this our squad compare to previous one? Um, like they're all very different and and all different characters, but. This is this is probably one one of the most enjoyable squads I've been in across the board uh, from the beginning. It's it's cultured around people being themselves and and allowed to express themselves, working unbelievably hard when we're working and enjoying each other's company when we're off. And I think what the what the coaches and staff have have done is is really good. In a sense that it's it takes the anxieties out of unnecessary areas for us, and when that's gone, all all we have to do as players is do our detail work, and that's that's done in a positive way because we're sitting with each other doing it. People aren't sitting in their room reviewing on their own, worrying about things. We sit, chat through things. Everything everything is an open forum, and. Uh, I think all of that sort of stuff just leads really well into people being comfortable and everyone feeling like they're a real part of, of what's going on. Can you really be hoping for a start this weekend and what do you expect from Fiji? Um, oh yeah, of course I'd love to be involved, whether it's number 318. Um, obviously every time you pull on the jersey it's a really proud thing that I get to do and, and I genuinely just love it so much. So. Um, Hopefully, fingers crossed, be involved. Um, and uh, obviously, Fiji, they've uh, shown a really good scrum, especially against Scotland, um, in particular the first half last weekend, and then over the internationals during the summer, they um, they have some big boys up front, and um, they're well drilled up front. So we're gonna have to meet that challenge head on. And uh, we had a tough scrummaging session there. We have another one tomorrow. So uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be ready to go for Saturday. Okay. Okay. The tails are a little bit tired here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, Me, it's totally different when you're when you're. Starting as opposed to when you're coming up a bit. Uh, well, it has to be. Yeah, um, you have to you have to prepare yourself differently. You have to think about how you're going to stay in the game when you're on the bench. It's something I've been working really hard on. As I spent majority of my career not in that position, and then now in that position, I want to be able to be as impactful as possible in all the right ways and add add positivity to the team. So when it's a constant learning curve now like about coming on but having seen things that have gone on in the game that you can give a message or or you can directly do yourself that's gonna have a positive impact and uh, 
it's been an enjoyable learning curve. I've, I've loved it, and I've I've uh, I've bounced off a lot of the back rows to be honest, because because they're just like they're always in and out and changing and and asking them how do they deal with it and and what's the solution when you're drifting or when you're thinking something different. And it's been uh, it's been real good help having people there to to kind of guide me along as well. What did you make of their Razzy Erasmus video? I did say it, yeah. Um, it's not for me to comment. I mean, just in general, do you think like do you think it's a good, a good thing for the game for for coaches or people in the game to to be criticising referees like that? What are you looking for? No, it's just, it's just, I just, it's a general. Um, you know, on a, I just on a said, scale, like, I think social think media is a dangerous place. Um, I got in trouble for stuff on social media before I learnt my lesson. Um, I don't know, it's, that's all I can say on it, it's my personal experience. Keen, just on the learning you spoke of there, is there anything you do differently now, obviously having all the experience you have, is there anything you do differently to prepare for a game or in recovery? Um, yeah, you, you have to pick up extra fitness sessions here and there and, and make sure you're, you're on the ball with that. Um, Around the mentality of the game, not really, because you're, you're thinking about your impact and your impact has to be the same whether you start or, or sub. Um, around the nutrition side of it, I would have learned a lot. Um, in the beginning, I would have eaten like I was on the bench, so not, not had the same load of food. And I got, I got caught off guard once or twice, having to come on early and not having the juice in me to to finish it out so uh, as a nutrition side of it I'd still now feel to start a game and then that's where you have to pay off your dues in the gym then on the Monday and, and cycle it out or or do a bit of fitness just to, to burn it back off what you didn't get done. And you said this is one of the most enjoyable squads that you've been a part of, how would you describe Fanny Farrell as a head coach? Um, that's probably that's a hard one. <laughs> uh, he's he's very caring, I think, for for all the lads. Um, the way he approaches it is is very thoughtful about how how the players feel and how his staff feel, and and I think we can we get that from him. We we understand that, and and it kind of just it's part and parcel of tying everyone in together. And is this one of the most competitive Irish squads you've been a part of? Um, yeah, probably is. Yeah, yeah there's, there's a lot of shots for competition, and um, and the standard is is through the roof. So, yeah, probably is. You feel that as well. Can you obviously uh, coming into the team? Obviously, the A team that are pushing as well. So, do you feel that competition for places? Yeah, hundred percent. Like last week, we we had 50, 50 lads in and. Training was very intense. Uh, lads are trying to prove a point, and um, I suppose just touching on what Church said there, the the competition and training's through the roof. Um, you have to be honoured every rep you have, and uh, certainly that's pushing pushing the lads around us and making the team better as a whole. So um, the competition's brilliant at the moment. Keen, do you feel that this is one of the most adaptable Irish sides? As in, before you might have done very well against certain teams, but not so well against other teams. Now it seems to be across the board. You can handle anything that's thrown at you. <coughs> um, I don't, yeah, I don't know. I think I think we're we've been probably in a sense. Yeah, we've been we've been well drilled on on a lot of different areas in training. There's there's not one main focus that you do or anything. And I would I would also say the clubs have been. At a high standard like that, the clubs have dealt well with different things, with different forms of attack and defence. And you know, you you come in from club to here to be to be polished off a bit more. You you're not necessarily starting from scratch when you come in here. So every, everyone's uh, everyone's being tested in all different ways. And then when it comes back to that. Sitting down as groups, you're bouncing ideas off each other and how to deal with this, how to deal with that. I think 
the the micro chat across the group with that about solving problems has been really good. Do you think that you'll have to learn to live now properly with the world number one tags as in that's something, a next stage of evolution that you have a right now to be called the best team in the world because you've beaten all before you? I don't know. I'm not sure. Well, looking at Fiji. I, 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 personally, I would tend not to look at that sort of stuff. Uh, I wouldn't take a ranking into account because I don't have a medal for a ranking. That's how I look at things. Um, with your preparation, though, you, you're preparing to be the best version of yourself. And if everyone prepares to be the best version of ourselves, we should continue to grow. And just finally on that, then with Fiji, the weekend's very different test to South Africa. Is it just as important to make sure that you get the job done against a side like Fiji, who might not be on the same level as South Africa, if we're looking ahead to something like a World Cup, to be playing these different types of teams at different levels? 100%, yeah. We, we, have, we have a standard of, of what's acceptable and what we want to achieve and go above. And what's not acceptable is to let that slip. Uh, what's not respectful is to let that slip also. You know, we need to respect our opposition and what they're going to bring. And we need to, by doing that, we need to bring our A game and, and put out our best performance. And I think with that mentality, you, you can use it across the board for whoever you play against. A, a question for, for both of you, Simon and Finley. You talked a bit about the, the competition. Um, the front three, the side of the three seems very settled. Do you view yourselves as, as backup players, or do you, do you have ambitions of, of breaking into the to the starting fifty, in particular a World Cup on the horizon? Uh, of course, yeah. Like you're always pushing. Like Church said, you want to be the best version of yourself, and um, obviously, Tiger's a world class player, and um, he's a British lion, and everything like that, but. Do you know, I need to be pushing him and making him better and then making myself better as well. So um, I wouldn't see myself as a backup player, but I can fill that role. And um, look, I just keep pushing myself and finding new limits to where I can go and we'll see what happens. So just for key answers as well, do you feel training alongside Ty is, is making you a better player as well? That yeah, 100%. Um, Ty's been very good to me. Like we started working together, obviously obviously been playing together, but when we've been up here in camp, I work a lot with him in terms of reviewing training and preparation and everything like that, and just kind of dancing ideas of him, learning from him as best I can, and asking him questions about like what he could, what he would do better there if he was me, or you know, little things like that. And you know, we catch up most nights and sit down for an hour or so and go through training, go through scrums and all that fun stuff, and um, just bounce ideas of each other and have a really good conversation about things. and. Uh, for me, that's been an area where I've got a lot of growth from, so I'm very thankful to him for for obviously letting me in. And Ian, how do you, how do you view your situation? Um, pretty similar. Um, I I view it with a growth mindset and and about how hard I can push Jeremy and Andy and and what I can get from myself in doing that. Um, I have a lot to give to them in what they can learn about the game and I am working on best ways of messaging that to the lads and and how to not just blurt stuff at them. Um, but at the same time, in doing all of that, I have to drag the best out of myself and be in a position that if called upon, I'm, I'm there to do the job. Um, to me, that's that's the fun part of it—the competition, the competition week in, week out, and and pushing for the top spot. Because if you lo if you lose that drive, there's no point in being in here. And just one very quick follow-up to that: you're the most experienced player in the squad in terms of caps. I think you're only 14 behind Brian, or just was the most cap player Islander ever had. Is that something? Is that an ambition of yours to to maybe become the most cap player? Have you, have you thought about that? I could have two hundred caps and no medals, and I don't know where I'd be happier. I think I'd take another 
five if I got some more silverware for it instead of another 20. So I think a cap number without reward is not so important. So very much team over personal team. 100%, yeah.